So then if we look at factors that affect metabolism in neonates, uh, this slide is just a reminder of the two phases of metabolism, hepatic metabolism, phase one being mostly oxidation, reduction, and hydrolysis reactions that make the molecule more polar so that it's a better substrate for phase two reactions. The phase two reactions are those that are carried out by the cytochrome P450 system, and they fall into the categories of conjugation with glucuronides um, or acetylation or sulfation. And sulfation is a very primitive pathway, so it's prominent in young animals or in more primitive species. So this slide is an illustration of acetaminophen, acetaminophen metabolism in beagle puppies from four weeks or four days of age to 60 days of age, so about two months old. And the left panel here is the glucuronide metabolite as these puppies metabolize the drug, and then the right panel is the sulfate metabolite. And you can see that the that the puppies form a lot of the sulfate metabolite early on, and then the proportion decreases as they get older. And the opposite is true for glucuronidation. So when they're four days old, they're much slower at glucuronidating things, but that gradually improves. And then when they get to be about six weeks old, it seems to reach a maximum. There's not much change by the time they're eight weeks. And you'll notice that the clearance of the drug is slower in these puppies when they're younger as well, which can be explained by the fact they have a lower uh, glomerular filtration rate and diminished tubular function. So speaking of kidney function, in humans, humans are born with their kidneys anatomically finished but functionally immature. But in dogs and cats, both anatomical and functional maturation take place after birth to some degree. So nephrogenesis continues for about two to three weeks in dogs and cats after birth. Um, the functional part of things includes increases in the GFR as they mature and also increases in tubular function. So this is the reason that neonates can be glucosuric if their tubular transporters aren't resorbing, resorbing all the glucose that they should be yet. And then the organic ion transporters in the kidney are also not at full capacity. And this matters because it's those organic ion transporters that secrete water-soluble drugs like the penicillins. So when should young animals be treated like adults with respect to drug metabolism? In general, liver function can be considered adequate at about five to eight weeks. In puppies, they have about 85% of their adult cytochrome P450 metabolic activity by the time they're four weeks old. And then renal function is also adequate by six to eight weeks old, although GFR and renal blood flow do continue to mature until about nine to 11 weeks. And urine osmolality also increases during that time. And so as we can see, there are multiple competing influences on drug disposition in neonates, some that will increase the plasma concentration, some that will decrease plasma drug concentrations. And then drug disposition, as we saw earlier, is also a dynamic process in these age groups since it changes rapidly over time. So as we talked about earlier, you may have come across blanket recommendations to reduce drug dosages in young animals, but obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that. When we have pharmacokinetic studies or safety studies in neonates or pediatrics, like those two studies I showed earlier with ampicillin and nerfloxacin, that can be very helpful. But I showed those two studies because those are the ones that we have. Basically, there are not a lot of other pharmacokinetic studies that are specifically done in neonates. And most of what we have as evidence for the safety or not of drugs in pediatric animals tends to be either theoretical or experiential based on expert opinion. So what we'll talk about during the rest of this lecture is a conglomeration of those recommendations regarding drug dosing and safety and efficacy of particular classes in younger animals that are from various sources, again, mostly based on expert opinion or theoretical concerns. Um, We'll talk about individual drug classes that might be contraindicated or not in neonates, and there's a list of them here.